Right now, it's claimed that this is the weapon most likely to have brought the aircraft down. It's a Russian-made book, and it's one of the missiles in the region capable of reaching that height, more than 30,000 feet. But even at that height, experts say a well-trained operator would easily recognise a civilian airliner. So did the missile system fall into the wrong hands? The Russian military, I can't believe, would have done this. The question, therefore, is has the Russian military given this kit, if you like, to the babies? Has it given it to the goons, who have enough technology to switch it on, but no understanding of what they're doing? So why was the aircraft flying over a conflict zone? Well, the Malaysian flight was flying on a well-travelled route. Think of it as a motorway for airliners between Europe and Asia. A few days ago, the Ukrainian authorities did restrict flights in the same area after attacks on military aircraft. But crucially, they only stopped planes from flying below 31,000 feet. This airliner was flying at around 33,000 feet, well above the restricted danger zone. Not only was it meant to be safe up there, but plenty of other major airlines were flying on the same route too. They were choosing the most economic flight route possible to keep their costs down, which is something we expect as customers. Uh, and they were no different than many other international airlines uh, coming out of the UK, coming out of Europe. As for Malaysian Airlines, two tragedies in less than six months has left them reeling. The search for the missing flight MH370 resumes next month. So what happens now? Well, all major airlines have stopped passing over eastern Ukraine, which could add some time to flights, especially between Europe and Asia. There are reports tonight that they found the aircraft's flight data recorder. It should at least reveal if the crew got any warning.